Modern software is getting increasingly more complex, relying on things like cloud providers, software as a service providers, worldwide deployments, microservices, and a whole lot more. With all of this complexity, we needed a better way than traditional logs and metrics to go ahead and track a request as it moves through all of these individual systems. The answer to this is distributed tracing. So let's go ahead and take a look at the how, the what, and the why of distributed tracing. Let's take a quick recap then of the issue that distributed tracing was made to solve and why it became so hard to see the full picture of our modern applications. As I said, they've become a lot more complex now using things like cloud computing, containerization, and microservices. So we take an example here of an e-commerce site. You might have a service here for your product catalog. So managing the searching for products, the returning of those results, checking the stock and the pricing of them and other things like that. Then you might have a recommendation service that takes in all of the user page views, all of their previous purchase history, and goes ahead and provides them with some recommendations on what they should buy. And then when they do go ahead and actually buy a product, you might have your payment gateway to go ahead and process that payment. Then you can place the order with the order management system. That order management system then needs to go ahead and talk to the shipping system and various other things like that. So you can see how complex applications can become with microservices like this. And some of these might even be software as a service as well like Stripe or something like that for your payment system. So that's why it become so hard to see the full picture. With our complex systems, you might have things like containerization. So they may be spun up and spun down based on demand. So actually finding out what machine caused that issue isn't as easy as it used to be. And you may also have different teams working on these different services as well. So finding an issue with the entire system is going to involve communicating with all of them. So this is what distributed tracing aims to solve, or at least make a lot easier for us. Distributed tracing wants to answer the question of what service a request went through, what each service did, how long it took, where errors originated from, were there any abnormalities in running it. It wants to give you the clear picture of your application. Now, it's important to note there were some core players in actually paving the way for distributed tracing. There was a paper from Google called the Dapper Paper, which essentially made the concept more mainstream among developers and explored how Google goes ahead and does distributed tracing. And then you have the big examples of open source projects, which are still widely used today. So you have Zipkin from Twitter and Jaeger, which was originated from Uber. Now, I'll show you in a bit how we can actually use Jaeger for traces. But before we look at that, let's go ahead and see what a trace looks like. So this here is how you would commonly see a trace represented in this sort of waterfall diagram like this. A trace is what captures the entire life cycle of a operation, such as a request to an API or something like that. So say we have our API here, what you can see is we make a request and that goes off to one service and that service might call another one as well. When it goes through multiple services, this is when it becomes known as a distributed trace as it starts to consist of telemetry data gathered from each individual process. And then each part of this trace becomes what's known as a span. These record things like the timing of the service, the service itself and any additional context as well. Every trace here has a parent child hierarchy of these spans as well. So you can see the trace ID stays the same across all of these individual spans, but the span ID changes, but then it also has a parent ID as well. So it knows what span then caused the other spans to occur as well. So there's a parent child relationship. You can see that between these colors here. So this one has a parent or a child of this one. And then this span ID has a child of this one. And you can see it's passing its context through it as well. This is what helps you see it in a diagram like this. So we have our span A, which is our root span. So essentially you can think of this as the entire API request here. And then you can think of span B as another service or function that it calls. And then span C as another function or service that span B has gone ahead and called as well. So this is what's linking all of our requests across our distributed system. So I wanted to just quickly describe there essentially what distributed tracing aims to solve and also what a trace and spans look like. But let's go ahead and look at this in an application now and with a real world service like Jaeger. To quickly take a look at my setup then, what I have here is a Node.js application. It's a very simple express app with one endpoint where it rolls the dice the number of times you ask it to and returns an array of those numbers. It has this instrumentation.ts as it's been set up with OpenTelemetry. Go ahead and check out our previous videos on how you can do this yourself. But essentially what I've got here is it's set up to use traces and it's sent using the OpenTelemetry protocol to an exporter. That exporter is then picked up by the OpenTelemetry collector, which we have here. And then in my exporters, I need to go ahead and add in one for Jaeger so I can send it off to there. And I need to set up a pipeline for my traces as well. 
So this is what the collector configuration will look like once we add in Jaeger there. So I've got my endpoint to send it off to Jaeger as an exporter here. And that's using the URL Jaeger and then 4318 as I'll be setting this up in a Docker network so I can refer to it by the Jaeger name there. And then down in service, I've set up my new pipeline. So we're going to be receiving our traces via the open telemetry protocol to the collector. Then we're going to process it with the batch processor, the recommended one, and then we're going to export it to Jaeger. So let's go ahead and spin this all up then. To do that, then I need to go ahead and create my Docker network. Then we'll go ahead and attach Jaeger to that. So that's going to be the command for running the Jaeger container here. And then I also need to go ahead and run up the collector as well for open telemetry once this has gone ahead and done and use our custom configuration. So I'll go ahead and hit enter on that. And I'll go ahead and pull the open telemetry collector image as well. So with all of that up and running, I should be able to send through some fake API calls to my application and we can see the trace in Jaeger. And there we go. This is the Jaeger UI here. You can see these are individual traces that have come in. So this is for the dice throw up. These are individual get calls that have been made. Now they have all errored out and that's because in my application code, I actually have a fake error so that we could see what an exception looks like in a span. But if we click into one of these, we can see that trace information that I was on about earlier in this sort of waterfall style diagram. So we have the overall get call and that's going to be this entire duration here and you can see how that continues. But then that goes off and runs a function that we have called roll the dice. You could think of this as another service, for example. And then this one goes off and actually calls the roll dice one and then calls that four times as I ask for four rolls of the dice. You can see how each individual one comes through like so. And you see the duration that that took there. And then you can see the trace call as well. We can dig a little deeper into each of these individual spans as well. So this is the whole trace. Let's click into one of the child spans here. We click into this, you can see the various tags that were on that. So we have the dice lib rolls of four. So this was a custom attribute saying essentially I called the roll the dice function with four. And then we have an error because an error did occur in this. As I said, I've got a sort of fake error in this. You can see it has the span format that came through as open telemetry protocol. It has the scope name, it has a status description of an error happen. We can even click in to see some of the logs as well, where I have those two that I set up. One of them is hello, I am a span event, as that's why I added into my application. Go ahead and check out the other video if you want to learn more about some span events. And then we also have the exception as well, saying there was an exception in this service. You can see how we can use all of this information here to go ahead and see where the problem actually occurs. And you can see we can even get information out about the process as well and exactly what this was running on. So you can see there how traces are going to be really useful for you for debugging complex applications. Obviously, this was a very simple application where we're using functions as our individual services here. But you could have an application, for example, that was running loads of different things, loads of different microservices. And as long as you set up distributed tracing to work on all of them so that it's passing the context through correctly, it can go ahead and assign that parent child relationship to it. And you should be able to see for a single call like this, so for a single get request, maybe a user's purchased something, you could see all of the individual layers that took place to go ahead and make that call finish. And then you can see where any issues like slowdowns or even if it did error out, where that actually occurred and the exact system that occurred in and why it occurred as well. Going back to the main Jaeger page, then this shows off the other reason that you want to use an observability backend for all of your data. And that's due to the powerful querying. Obviously, if you had a very busy app, you would have thousands of these calls pretty much every minute. If you want to go ahead and actually find the trace that matters to you, so the one that you're trying to investigate, you have a load of options for searching for that specific trace, whether you want to do it by tags here, as you can see, whether you want the status code, whether it had an error, you can look back for the last hour or a load of custom durations. And then you can even look for the ones that took too long. For example, you could filter this by say, if the minimum duration was over 10 seconds and various things like that as well. So it really helps you get down to the root cause of your problem. And that's why you want to go ahead and use something like Open Telemetry Collector. So you can go ahead and pick and choose between your observability backends really easily as well. And you could change it out later if you wanted to find a better one. So I do recommend going and checking out that video we did on Open Telemetry Collector if you want to learn more about that. So there we go. Hopefully you've learned a bit about what distributed tracing is and why we actually needed it and the solutions that we have to go ahead and solve this and actually see a clearer picture of our more complex applications in the modern age of development. If you want to check out a video on what Open Telemetry is, go ahead and watch this one here. Otherwise, go ahead and watch the one that YouTube thinks you'll like. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching.